welcome to Who Knew. We are fans of the current series of Doctor Who, and on this podcast, we discuss our likes, dislikes, and insights of the modern regeneration of the show. Today's episode is episode 13, The Parting of the Ways. If you have not kept up till now, you should go back and watch the rest of the season, because this is the season finale. Um... The Doctor battles an old enemy that he thought he had destroyed forever, the Daleks. This episode was written by Russell T. Davis, Davis, directed by Joe Ahern. It first aired on the 18th of June, 2005, and had a final ratings of 6.91 million viewers. Let's go around and uh, introduce ourselves. Hi, this is Brian. This is Frank. This is Arlene. This is Auburn. Hey, this is Josh. Welcome back, everybody. This is Kelsey. And this is Eugene. This episode picks up right where Bad Wolf left off. The Daleks ask Rose what the Doctor is planning to do. The TARDIS suddenly materializes on the Dalek ship, surrounds Rose and the Dalek that is guarding her, and brings them on board. Jack quickly blows up the Dalek, destroying his altered defabricator weapon in the process. It's really interesting we actually see the TARDIS flying through space. This, yeah, this is the first time we've seen it spinning, and it, I think it looks really cool. <laughs> I like the spinning. Yeah. Does it spin in the credits? But not like this. It's at an angle, oh. and it's spinning towards something instead of at you or away from Oh, you. you're not with it. It was just yeah. spinning in the credits where it's just moving along. This mm. is It's booking along, <laughs> spinning, which uh, is a great which, visual effect, and yeah. I think that's the only reason they really put it in Yeah. There. Because it's like, the TARDIS doesn't do that. The TARDIS would just materialize inside the Dalek ship. Completely understood, and I still like it. Yeah, I, oh yeah. <laughs> well, I think there's two reasons. The first is because it's a great effect and a mm-hmm. lot of fun. The second, I think, is to explain uh, the whole why Jack put the extrapolator, which was from Boomtown. Yeah, uh-huh. And hook that into the TARDIS to give it a shield, because Rose had mentioned That's that it right. doesn't have any shields. And this is saying, no, because we're going to need this device further on and tell you what this is about so they put it on tells you nope we now have a force field around the tardis so we can show you this by all the (laughs) missiles being you know exploding and the tardis being fine it it is weird that that they kind of say that the 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 tardis has no protection or shields but i think in an earlier or in a classic episode uh you can't fire a weapon inside the tardis console so yeah this is one of those things where it's like it depends it's whatever the so story Jack is. Just, yeah. Jack destroys yeah. you know, the Dalek inside the TARDIS. So. But but it's also like, oh, nobody can just break into the TARDIS. Mm-hmm. And then if the script calls for it, oh, well, people well, could break into the yeah. TARDIS. You know, it depends on the script. But, then but I, still it works. I was really curious. So when the TARDIS travels, it doesn't physically just travel Mm-mm. places. It just dematerializes. Well, it, 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 it is a spaceship. It, it can. Is, it's a spaceship. It just doesn't do so it It can do that. It can travel okay. through physical space. They do it in a couple of different episodes, but yeah. And the doctor, a production point of view, it's just okay. Let's it's easier it's just there. Yes. <laughs> we don't have to see okay. it traveling a lot. And the and it, there is one episode that where it it does fly, and it kind of like breaks. It it gets all smoky and stuff. And the doctor says, "Well, for a spaceship, it actually doesn't travel through space much, <laughs> because okay. it doesn't usually fly. It just and I think that's a production limitation at the time. But then now with all the CG, we can show it spinning in space." So I think it's fine. You just like, like the it. effect. No, I, I like the effect. <laughs> it, 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 it doesn't get... The, the missiles don't hit it. I just like that. It's too. because it's blue and it's kind of shiny, almost like a light. Yeah. Spinning there, it so continues like, the theme, like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> shiny blue for you. Too. There are a lot of blue lights in this episode. I, I, can't, I, I could point them all out, You're but I'm not going to. <laughs> <laughs> I love um, that the Daleks were worried. Yeah, I'm asking Rose, what is he gonna do? What is he gonna do? What is he gonna do? <laughs> and they also shake when they talk. I think this is one of the first times we actually like see that. Or well, it's only the second episode with them. Yeah, but you know, it's noticeable now. Um, well, with the multiple Daleks, you have to yeah, tell you have to which one which is, is yeah. talking. Oh, is it always the same? Vo- is it the same actor doing the voice? Do you know? In yes. the classic series, yeah. yeah. Um, oh, a classic? I don't know. But this sorry, one, in the, Nicholas, I'm sorry. In the in Nicholas the, Briggs, yeah. I meant the current series. I think so. But I don't even know if that's true because I know there are different Dalek. Yeah, later on they start to sound like, a little differently. Yeah. Mm. The, there, there is one main guy. Yes, Joe Exterminate. Nicholas Briggs. Nicholas Briggs. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think this is also the first time that a Dalek has been inside the TARDIS in the console. 
I think so too. I think it's oh, um, wait. unique. Before that, yes. When else and do we ever see like when the TARDIS materializes, like the people that are there to show up inside the TARDIS? Well, I think that was something they he he did on uh, purpose. We did that before, right? In this. Well, we do that later on. We do it a lot but, later on. But um, before this, do we do that in the no. current season, the uh, current series, or the two thousand five? Right now. Uh, mm-hmm. Give me a minute to think. I don't think so. Because it happens after, for sure. Oh, yeah. So Repeatedly. I was, I was trying to think of before. No, it, that hasn't happened yet since the beginning of this series. So this is the first time it happens. In this so, but yeah, he, he did that. The doctor. The doctor did it on purpose. Yeah. Like, yeah. To, yeah, yeah, yeah. So you have to allow someone to come in. If it, yes. If the TARDIS materializes in a spot where there's people. If not, they'd yeah. be squashed. Uh, or what... Well, I think he was uh, we can break the timeline, the but we can't. Uh, 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 something you, you get scattered. Yeah, okay. <laughs> you're not you're not no, you're not living any longer. Okay. So was it on purpose that Udi the dialect like, also got extrapolated? Wait, no. What's the word? Uh, materialized yeah. inside as well because then they shot it. So yes. it's like at first I was like. You know, if you thought they were going to interrogate the dialect, that's not this show. No, they're just going to shoot. It's just it. to protect Rose and surround her, and I think. You know, at this point, they don't know some of the other things they're going to be doing. Oh, yeah. But it was just this Dalek is in the proximity that would fit where the TARDIS is going to be taking up that space. And two things can't exist at the same it, time. It, so they're bringing that on board. They have to bring both. Mm-hmm. Just as put it that way. They just like and the Dalek it. is shooting. He shot first. <laughs> <laughs> when they the Dalek's release, name when was they Greedo. It, it'll be the other <laughs> way around. <laughs> Okay, I'm stopping. The doctor explains that he was there during the time war. The final act was supposed to destroy all the Daleks and that at that same moment, it killed off his own race. He realizes that the genocide of his people was pointless since the Daleks survived. They exit the TARDIS and meet the Emperor of the Daleks. His damaged ship fell through time at the end of the war and that is how its race survived. For centuries he hid, infiltrating the systems of Earth and rebuilding the Dalek race by harvesting humans from the games. The Emperor states that all humanity has been removed from the human genetic material to create new pure Daleks. Mm. But not just... Oh, I was going to say, not just from the games, but for hundreds and hundreds of years. He's been coming up with ways to... The the weak, the... Prisoners, refugees... The uh, the, what, but how does the games describe? made it really easy. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, okay, this is a little bit more efficient. How did you describe it? it? All the, he didn't say unimportant. He said the weak. Didn't he say he, the weak? The weak, or... yeah. But all the, not voiceless. God, what was the word that he said? I don't know. But I it's like, remember. Now. remember. Yeah. Because then he, then he listed the prisoners, refugees, yeah. but it's all of the unimportant, all the. So I got I a question remember. about the time war. Uh, Uh-oh. If, so if he realized he didn't uh, or, or if he exterminated all of the Daleks supposedly what about going back in time before he did that or is since it was the time war it erased them from time itself so they didn't even exist before he did that like ripples it in doesn't time. It, well the time war is very convoluted so you can't say definitively but it doesn't appear that he erased the Daleks from history just that the Daleks went away well, from what? From this episode. Yeah, but so that's, no, from so what why, why is it such a surprise to see them again if he's traveling back in time from time to time? Um, because from, they're, because yeah. again, with the convoluted, you have to accept with the time war that the Daleks are just gone. Right. That's what, okay. Yeah. But they were gone. there in the history. From right. what Jack said is he thought it was a myth because they were there, but then they all just disappeared. So they yeah. all got all from all periods of time went to the time war. Because Roderick yeah. knows what a Dalek is. Right. But yeah, well, that, right. yeah, but it obviously didn't didn't work. But I'm saying that because they were those few Daleks that survived, or the one, whatever. I can't I have to. But, the emperor was the one, and then created okay, yeah. more. But for him to be, you wouldn't be surprised that they existed if you went back in time before you destroyed them. From what we get, anything in the in anything from the Doctor's present. Mm-hmm to the future mm-hmm. he should never run into a dalek ever again right right so when he travels back in time he w- still shouldn't run into daleks okay because they're gone because they right. were pulled pulled from, from pulled to go to the yeah fight with the but people race. remember the daleks but now they equate them with myth just like earlier on uh jade 
the tree the tree jade couldn't believe jade. that he was a t- time lord because right. they're the thing of legends they're myth right mm. so because they, the time yeah. lords also, had the same thing happened to the time lords. casualties of the time so lords, they're yeah. unicorns so and it's almost like yes yes it's okay. almost like um, the memories are like echoes of what once existed yes. yeah that's a good way to describe yeah. it that's good yeah Write that one down. <laughs> <laughs> before we move on i know you wanted to start reading um I don't I've read liked... this. <laughs> <laughs> that's all from your memory. No, Sorry. That's, uh, that's how you usually talk. I have a pedantic memory. I mean, what? <laughs> no, I like what the show is trying to say about people in game shows. Yeah, and absolutely. reality TV. The commentary on the that. commentary on reality TV is like, oh, it's the unwanted, mm-hmm. the people who are <laughs> like the bottom of the barrel. That's why we're taking them. And they're just there for your entertainment. So mm-hmm. yeah, by the end of the episode, I I I want to discuss Roderick again. I okay. have Understood. things to say about him. So does Roderick. <laughs> and when you're talking about the Dalek shaking, yeah, and that they are scared of the Doctor, uh, in this scene when he yells, I think he yells, "I'm talking" or something. They physically back up. Yeah, they're scared of him, which is undalek like Very. Undalek-like. Well, he talks about their fear. That's, that, mm-hmm. that's the one little ounce of emotion left. Yeah. And also, he's a legend. He's a myth to them. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Because he's the one that ended them. Yeah. And they don't know. I mean, they're all new Daleks. They're yeah. all. Yeah. True. So they've only heard about Time Lords and how Time Lords wiped out the, the Dalek new, race. And yeah. The new emotion of blasphemy. Yeah. Like. <laughs> and worship. Mm-hmm. I thought. It was yeah. They, they become the cult of the Dalek Emperor. How the doctor are looks playing Coachella next year. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was very interesting how the doctor basically looked. From what he said, he looks at faith as insanity. Is, yeah. No, I don't. Get Maybe not the, that far, but we said far. you're insane. Right. Well, yeah, we're gonna talk about that. Well, anyway, um, continue. We're it's just, it's just in its simple uh, on the page form. It was, that's not something that the Daleks have. They don't have ideas of worship or blasphemy or anything like that that's they've gotten rid of but that's part of the humanity that's still left in the cellular structure that the dogs are now made from they're made from the human right and they can't they, cope so with that that they have part of the human with them and they can't cope with that because that's the thing they detest yeah. most they want to be pure their own race their own dalek race so and what that's what drives them insane that's why he says you're insane because he knows they can't handle it. it. Not because you, you believe in worship, but this is proof of it because you shouldn't have that and you hate yourself so much because you're human now. You have a little bit of human in you. All right. Because that and being in space for hundreds of years and trying to be quiet, <laughs> that has just driven them crazy. Mm-hmm. And the self-hatred of what they, to survive, what they have to become and what they came from. So it's just that they had now those concepts proves that there's some human in them and that's what's driving them crazy rather than the idea of those things by themselves. Does okay. that make sense? It makes sense. I now, sh- now, Russell Davis is an avowed atheist. Uh-huh. And so he that, does try and I ca- put I, that I, in there. I totally think you can extrapolate that from it. But I just... He said it right off them saying something that was faithful. Don't blaspheme. You know, and they're like mad with faith almost. Like very blind, zealot-like zealot, faith. Yeah, and then zealot. he says, you're insane. So I'm not, I'm agnostic, so I'm not making an agenda here, but uh, that's kind of what I got. <laughs> What's that chicken? Chicken. <laughs> <clears throat> what you call me? I'm just kidding. Um, I, I wanted to, to point out that the background uh, special effects are really cool in this um, spaceship mm-hmm. because you can see like just hovering Daleks yes. in the background yeah. and the focus and it just shows you that there's a lot to this um, this set that is on the computer yeah <laughs> it just makes makes it more um believable oh i see yeah. like when they're on the bridge yeah because you see the close-up of eccleston and then yeah. in the background there's yeah. this hovering and there's halls and mm-hmm. decks a lot different things. than that one dalek in a warehouse yeah but were there blue lights yes okay. no, no, no. <laughs> only in their eyes <laughs> that's why he noticed there you go <laughs> um the doctor rose and jack escape in the tardis and return to the top floor of the game station most of the people have been evacuated, but there are still about a hundred people on the lowest levels. How about that moment when he shuts the door to the TARDIS and, and leans can, up against it? And he gives mm. a grin. 
that one? No. No, we didn't. Oh, it's when he's exit. I see, I see what you mean. No, yeah. which is great. Yeah. When he, you know, when he is leaving and he turns one back and just l- grins at them. And then, then he shuts the door. And the, yeah. I think that's the, I think that's the moment, the impact of what's going on. That his people are gone. Yeah. For nothing. When he leans ahead. And he leans his head against the door and they hold on that for a rather long time. Yeah. They and push it's him just, too. Yeah. Where is it's it right after like, he gives him the big pep talk? No, this is right when they say they're you know they're leaving. They're still in the TARDIS. They're leaving. They're leaving the Dalek Emperor. I heard you. I know you heard me. (laughs) But yeah, he leans in, and you just hear the echoing voices of all the Daleks. They're heading back to Satellite Five. Okay, like like they're saying, worship him or him. Uh, uh, blaspheme, blaspheme. Yeah, and, and, and worship him, and, and worship him. him. Yeah, okay. Exterminate. And it sounds like they're still Exterminate. shooting at the target. Oh yeah, they're still trying to shoot. Which is so protected by the extrapolator. I think that all of those, those sounds that are going on are familiar to mm-hmm. him from the war, and it's he's just, hearing it from uh, the war, and he's like yeah. reliving those battles. Yeah. Yes. And it's just it, 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 was, he's he hearing sounds yeah. he thought he'd never hear ever again. Yeah, and I think it's getting to him. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, coming back. The doctor devises a plan to alter the station to emit a delta wave. This will destroy the entire Dalek fleet, but could also destroy all life on Earth. He calculates that it'll take three days to create, but they only have 22 minutes until the fleet arrives. The doctor gets started. I just have to say delta wave is what did Captain Pike in Star Trek, the menagerie, so he's going to turn all humans into things in wheelchairs that can only blink once or twice, so, you know, Daleks. (laughs) And I thought that wheelchairs in the future would look a little better, but... (laughs) (laughs) Uh, I don't understand why the Daleks don't just blow up this this station. Why don't they just blow it up? Why are they trying to... They're far away. They're at the end of the solar system. When they get there. Well, they're blowing up the planet. But but they make a whole point to infiltrate the station. They're getting the doctor. The doctor, yeah. You can just blow it up. <laughs> well, they can't blow up where the doctor is because Jack takes the extrapolator out of the TARDIS oh. and hooks it up into the ship, creating a force field bubble for the first yeah, um, sure. top the, six levels. And the extrapolator right. is I blue. think Jack even says they can't. <laughs> yes. I think Jack even says they can't blow up the station because of that. I mean, okay. I think it, he actually yeah. says that. Huh. Okay. Okay, so Jack and Linda with a Y and three other station workers go to the people on the bottom level in an attempt to recruit and help and help hold back the Daleks from the upper floors. Jack tells those remaining behind to stay quiet and with his small army travels up to floor 494 to make a stand against the impending Dalek attack. Right, but right before this, um, Jack says his sort of goodbyes to Rose and the doctor. Mm-hmm. And on the, the, the kiss that he gives both of them, he wanted to make it the same, like emotional wise not not sexual who did the actor yeah john berman he said that on the commentary he wanted to kiss them the exact same way i could see that and i, I think, think that's he great did. Like he does kiss the, no, the yeah, it works yeah he does kiss the doctor a little longer Just yeah a the little doctor longer. gets a little longer one well, he's, he's he been, is he's, the doctor but he's a doctor <laughs> <laughs> well he's also older <laughs> so he can feel it better yeah. but they were more emotional yeah. goodbye kisses which is really but i think e- he did done equally, really well yeah and i yeah. and i like that that's a great choice um, is then, that the doctor's first kiss ever? Even in the cl- even in the classic series, because he never kissed a companion. That I don't remember. I yeah, I, I would. I don't have an answer. Yeah, because there was no tension, sexual tension between At the doctor all. and this any companion. Time, this is yeah. the first time. Yeah, yeah so well, they're thinking the Daleks would infiltrate at floor four ninety four. Mm-hmm. So maybe. They, but they got 495, Doctor said, or Jack later on said, no, I like 495. So they went up actually to 495 to set up their barrier. Oh, okay. I forgot about that. I wrote, I wrote No, that. no, he, he says that because he, like, he likes 495 because Android is there. Is there. That's the set of the and he's, link. Yeah. It's like, I like 495. I like but they were coming in there. at 494, so they went yeah. up to the one yeah. level. Yeah. The and that, yeah, and then they were above that. Were coming, okay. Jack and his team were above that. Mm-hmm. His His... Few, his happy few. His happy few. <laughs> and Jack's speech was just depressing. I mean, it wasn't really a motivating, get everybody yeah. riled up speech. It Saint was just, if you're not coming, well, you know, 
listen to us die and then you'll know you're wrong. <laughs> it's just, no, it's like, you don't believe in Daleks, fine. Get a gun, come on up. There's nothing else different between this floor and that floor then. If you mm. don't believe that they're coming. It's using guilt as a motivator. And if you are believe that they're going to be coming, we need that doesn't all the work. people we can. They're going to kill you anyway. <laughs> Um, I also find it funny that the the guns that they're just handing out to anybody are the same guns that they use in um, the Dalek episode. They're G36s, so they're old guns. <laughs> like, I this is the future. That. Shouldn't they have lasers? Well, they said they had bastic bullets, but I don't know what that is. Were they reference that in other... <laughs> no. Brian, Brian is making a face at me, for those yes. of you who can't oh, see. Oh, yes. Here's the gun etiquette again. Which is all of us. <laughs> just wait until he starts talking about Captain Jack's gun. <laughs> Wait, it goes a, on and on. Go ahead. I have a question, though. So someone mentioned guilt as a motivator. Um, do you think a lot of this is just doing religious commentary as well? So he's saying faith is Could be. like crazy. Guilt as a motivator doesn't work because you just stay down there. You're not going to follow. Mm-hmm. So well, I, re- I, I, to go along with what you're saying, not to interrupt you, I, I don't if you want to finish your no, go ahead. saying. But like, I have another thing that I was going to bring up later that the Daleks invading the earth and wiping out, you know, what was there. It's just like the colonization of Western civilization into the States. You know, the English came and wiped out the Native Americans and it's pretty much the same thing. Yeah. So it's I, I a just, lot of, a lot of that going on. In this I episode. really feel that there is well, a religious commentary going yeah. on within this. As I think well. there is too. And the more I watch it, the more I see it. Yeah, but, but I mean, plus, but guilt. You know, you're talking about guilt. I, that only works on Catholics and Jews. Yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah. I don't, I don't, you don't you know. know I guess we're in good well, company. <laughs> <laughs> well, I always used to say that uh, Catholic guilt is based on fear, and Jewish guilt is based on guilt. <laughs> <laughs> and the emperor does mention, you know, he does. He's say, God. I'm God, and if I'm God, creator of life, being what the are Daleks, you? What are you? And he's where yeah. the doctor is going to destroy all life. There's definitely a religious and also the yeah. Dalek. Thing going the Dalek theme is a choir. I mean, that's yeah, that's true it's too. A choir right? Singing, it sounds yeah. like like a Gregorian. Yeah. Chant well, didn't you say in the last out? episode it's that Hebrew. they were saying in, in Hebrew? Hebrew. Yeah. 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 See, so there is really so it's the Jewish and the Christian combating here. In Judeo like Christian. That's yeah. some heavy duty guilt. <laughs> yeah. Did you make that up? Judo <laughs> chop. No wonder they're insane. It's a mixed marriage. And in the end, whoever can like. I mean, holy vey. Sorry, yeah, but saying. whoever can, like, in this way, it's kind of putting the doctor not as a god, but as a person who's willing to fight against the, the organization. Two. Yeah. That, the Antichrist? <laughs> I don't know about the Antichrist, but it's more like... A reformer? Going into being agnostic, it's more mm. like, I am my own will, mm-hmm. I am my own power, I say no, so it's a no. Yeah, yeah. So I think, A lot of the whole episode is him pointing at how wrong everything else is. Yeah. And not saying it, what is right. He's no, just, just yeah. saying what's wrong. Right. Even at the end right. when we'll see Rose does what she does for something good, he tells her, you shouldn't have done that. Nobody should have done anything, according to him. <laughs> <laughs> you just leave the earth, let it, let it you know, evolve on its own. <laughs> like the prime directive. <laughs> <laughs> we all know how well that works. <laughs> But I don't, I don't know. I never really thought of it. I mean, they had the obvious God references and things with the Dalek, but I never really thought of being a more undertone. It was more of society. Well, you know, I how think... Everybody goes along with what society has, and you have to be an individual and say no if it's not right, not just go along with it. Mm. The whole, well, jumping ahead a little bit, with Rose saying he showed a better way of life. Mm-hmm. He showed you don't give up. You fight for what is right you fight for others who can't fight for themselves you, you say no mm-hmm. and it's more of a society way of don't be so complacent and not really just not the religious well, he, fight but more of just the complacency well, that we've all fallen into yeah well Nietzsche said like religious religion is the opiate of the masses so it's the whole religion is that thing that keeps us complacent, complacent yeah so mm-hmm. we have to fight beyond religion not just the bounds of religion as that a structure us, but like yeah, as a that keeps entity us, yeah as that keeps us organized which you know? is the episode where the doctor meets Nietzsche <laughs> <laughs> and pronounces it 
you know, Nietzsche. <laughs> I think it's when but they went to you, Japan. <laughs> <laughs> what is he doing in Japan? In Kyoto? I don't know. <laughs> Waiting for Get Out. Well, okay. even if there wasn't a specific agenda, I think those themes that we're talking about are just prevalent in life and story and religion. It's just things that happen right. all the time. Oh, stuff, yeah. And but it, it could also be talking about um, not religion per se, but cult. Yeah. Mm. You know, where it is like, you know, you get a cult leader that's charismatic. And boy, that Dalek Emperor oh, is yeah. charismatic. He oozes it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, you know, it's, he's he's a cult leader. So he inspires fanatical worship from his followers. He can't be that charismatic if he can't wink. <laughs> <laughs> so, because this was 2000. Oh, 2005. When, when was all the Oh, which one? Cult. Well, that was earlier. Like earlier? Like, that was, that's true. That was in something the Something Harvest. Years. What was the one with the Kool-Aid? That was in the... Late 90s. What the was Heaven's it Gate. called? Heaven's Gate. Heaven's Gate. I was, I was thinking Blue Harvest, but we all know that one. And by a guy called Applewhite. I mean, if you're going to follow a guy called that, I don't know. Yeah, that's right. a weird name. Yeah, your days are numbered. Um, I wanted to point out that the, the, the practical Dalek for the Dalek em- Emperor is uh, the same one used in the episode Dalek. They just repurposed that practical. Oh, yeah. And then, yeah, redid it a little bit for this one. It's so weird. I mean, it's so cheesy looking, but it works. You yeah. totally buy it. <laughs> At least I do. I don't know why. It's because the story is so good. Yeah. I can I can forgive so many bad oh, special absolutely. effects. And in a way, good. it's good puppetry. Like, it was simple what they were doing, but they did it in a way and that it just it's good. You know, <clears throat> less is more. I'm sorry. Or, or, or for me, you find it so gross that you don't really want to look at it that long. So you're just kind of like, kind of looking at it, like you know, like it still on the peripheral. You're like, yeah, that's oh. why I said oozing. Yeah, it's, it's Charis- gross. charisma. It's like, we, I think we discussed on an earlier podcast. What is it? It's like a brain with, right? Remember, we were like, yeah, we in Dalek, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. But the, in the, the, Dalek, you can see it more of a as a. Face. human-like face well yeah head. just off to the side a bit i didn't see that before but but this one you definitely see it has more of a like a darth vader grill if you notice that thing i didn't a, notice because i don't stare at it that long <laughs> and a way bigger brain yeah well they they had to make it a yeah. little different but um the dalek that they blow up inside the tardis looks completely different from the emperor dalek i don't know if you guys have noticed i didn't notice yeah it's smaller human it has it looks like it has the two eyes more prominent oh it did yes yeah. now i remember where the emperor dalek has mm. that one yeah so yeah mm. just saying rose and the doctor are still working on the delta wave when rose asks why can't they go back in time and warn the station about the daleks the doctor tells her once he is at a point in time he is part of events he was glad that rose's question was about wanting to help rather than running away. And I like that he says, you could ask, but you didn't. To leave. Yeah, to leave, yeah. to, to Why run is away. That? But why is that surprising? Like, Rose has always been the one to stay and help, and I don't understand why that's surprising. But I like that he's Which taking you, time to point out that she did it. Out. It's funny. Because he, he, you know what? He I knows think, this is a hopeless case. Yes. Yeah. what I get. Mm-hmm. Yes, because even earlier when Jack is splitting up the assignments on what people do, or when people die, <laughs> or when yes, that's exactly what he's yeah. doing. Is he when knew? people die. I think he knew that that because because if that, you yeah. watch it, watch it again, and when he does it all, Jack is saying, "Do this, do this, do this." The doctor's already working, and the doctor goes, "Rose, come and help me." He calls her away from that immediately. Mm-hmm. So he already knows this is hopeless. We're going to still try. We might succeed. That happens to me a lot, but I'm going to. If Rose goes down, she's dead. So I'm going to keep her close. Mm -hmm. I'm keeping Mm -hmm. her close immediately. Yeah, because Jack was like, uh, he was he he told everyone else, I'm going to give you these guns that are going to blast through the the dialects. But that not going to do anything. That didn't happen on the first floor because there were the guns. and that, well, the woman cries, we haven't gotten to it yet, but the woman cries out, you lied. Yeah. yeah. And he did. And which I think he did. They were just... I'm um, not sure. I think he did think that they were going to work. Really? Mm. I, I don't think know. so. I don't think so. I think they... Well, he, made, he made a hard choice. Miss. The, uh, for his point mm. of view, he still said the Daleks Even him? Even him? Jack no, did. Yeah, no, no. This is the doctor. But the doctor no, we're talking said. about Jack. No, no Jack said the ballistic. Jack. So not the ballistic, the bastic oh, yeah, right. bullets. So oh, yeah, I think he did right. believe it from part of the mythology. Okay. And at one point it might work if it was concentrated more on the well, yeah, ice Yeah, because it did but, blow up that one. Yeah, it, it blinded that one. So but it didn't work. I, I think they have evolved a little bit more from mm-hmm. that or had other information. Like, I don't okay. think it was an out-and-out out lie. It was like... Well, that's good. Yeah, you're right. It was like, well, it might work. But let's tell them it will, because it could work. 
rather than out. But online. they had a force field. Is that what it was? Yeah, the Daleks. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, which they had it in the other episode Dalek. with mm-hmm. Ben Staten. Yeah. Right, but Jack wasn't. There. Also, my thing is, Rose says, "Can't you just go back a week before the station and warn them?" I so want the Doctor to turn to her and go, "Gee, Rose, do you want the Reapers back?" Yeah. <laughs> we lived through this. You saw what happened. When there's two of us. When it's, you know you yeah. cross the timeline. It's like, you know, you're... You're not thinking. Well, it's like, you know, everybody got eaten and your father had to die again. Yeah. But that was a whole different situation of why the Reapers came in Father's Day. But, but it this, was still... But it's but still the same basic question. Happen. I agree with yeah, you. Yeah, absolutely. Like, and you have to get around it. Otherwise, most of the stories are not going to happen. You can't <laughs> right, we're gonna just have a go back well, no, and change have a nice, everything every time. You have a great little scene between the two of them because of that question. That's that true, agree. too. But I like that you land somewhere. You are now part of the events. That's yeah. something a lot of other time travel shows ignore. Also, no, they also go with part of it. It's okay, like you're That's here now. You have to deal with what's going on here because things are changing here. So anything after this is in flux. You can mm-hmm. go to a different future. Yeah, you know, it's the whole Back to the Future, Marty's you know alternate you know, timeline, alternate yeah. timelines of things going. Wait a minute. So once you're there, you have to work and fix that. Mm-hmm. Unless you go with the quantum leap theory. <laughs> True, that's no, a ball of for that. <laughs> right. Um, the machine is ready, meaning the Delta Wave machine, but needs to power up, which will not happen in time. The doctor has an idea and excitedly enters the TARDIS, followed by Rose. He tells her his idea could work, but she needs to hold onto part of the console, and he runs back outside of the TARDIS. Using the sonic screwdriver, he remotely activates the TARDIS and sends Rose back home and out of danger. So sad. Especially it, when you know oh, what's yeah. happening and, uh, you know, how he gets her into the TARDIS. You're just like, no, no. He thinks of that very quickly, too, I noticed. When yeah. I watched this. yeah. Like, as soon as he realizes it doesn't work, he's like, he just gets her out of there. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Very heroically. It's really, uh, when I first watched this, I was just like, what is going on here? Why is he stopping? And then he does what he does, and I'm like, oh, that's so. And when you know at the moment he turns. Yeah. You can see it on his face. It's great. Great acting by Mm -hmm. Eccleston and great, um, like a twist almost, but not really. And great ignorance by Rose. Yeah. (laughs) I think he actually did it this time because he already watched her die once. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't think he would have done it if that hadn't Mm -hmm. happened. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. He would have been Mm -hmm. like, okay, well, we're in this. Let's Mm -hmm. get through it. But he remembered what it felt like. When, was when, she died. Blank. Dalek. when she died in the game of Weakest Link. I was going to say Dalek oh, too. Right, right, right. Also. So this is the third time maybe? Yeah, so... But, yeah, but he really saw her die. That's right. Yeah, and he was like... And, he he yeah. was crushed. Yeah. yeah. And he made that promise to Jackie. So he's like, mm-hmm. this is it or never. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's like, great. It's I a really great moment. Failed. I just really... I feel in that moment every time I watch it. It's really good. And then we get to this next part. Where, as Rose unsuccessfully tries to exit the TARDIS, a recording of the Doctor appears and tells her there is no way for him to survive. And this is the only way to keep her safe and the TARDIS out of enemy hands. She arrives back home and Mickey comes running up, having heard the TARDIS. She wants to return to the future, but nothing she tries will make the TARDIS work. The emergency program. (sighs) That's the greatest thing. It's really good. It's a fake. It's so great. <laughs> no. To me, it's a fake. No, and then when he turns and looks at her, because he, he knows that but, she's standing there. But do you know why that's so effective? Why? Because, because he looks at us? Well, okay, so the thing, it's a hologram like mm-hmm. via Star Wars. It's very jittery and like not... It's a recording. Yeah, it's a recording. And the voice is treated as a hologram. Yeah, that's right. And then when he turns to Rose, it's not treated. So it has that oomph. That hits you every time. It doesn't have the static. Yeah, it doesn't have that staticky jitteriness. And <laughs> oh wow! It so doesn't. that's why that works. It's, mm-hmm. it's very effective. Well, the whole—it's a whole combination of everything. And he looks at her. It's the sound. It's the close-up. I mean, this is obviously oh, yeah, my sure. only my point of view. But I don't think it was a recording. I think he was using the, the sonic screwdriver to project himself into the TARDIS because mm, he's yeah. done things like that. Well, or will do things like that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Time travel. <laughs> Where he's doing it to talk to her. Because I don't see him having that program set up. He never did with any other companions. It's, I don't see that being something that he would have initiated. That's so a good I think theory. he is programming that and going, 
I'm not going to talk to her. Just tell her mm-hmm. what's going on. Don't give her a chance to respond. Looking forward. And then at the last minute, have a good life. And he mm-hmm. has to tell it to her. So that's why he turns. Yeah. That's a real good theory. I like that. I like that too. No, sorry. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> Again, yeah. it seems like it's I'm the only one at the table who says this is a fake. He's got to be, you know. So I think it works both ways. It's oh. good enough that it works both ways. And that's what I like about it. And um, so if you never thought about it, that's why that, to me, that's effective, like production wise. I agree. It works both ways. But yeah, I just saw when I was looking at it. Yes. Understood. And then we also get Rose's theme, which I know Frank really is a fan of. It, I think that also sells that moment. And um, when when the TARDIS lands back in rose's present day it's the same street that they landed on in father's day and i think that's also is that where they always land though in between that those tenement buildings not really. different spots different spots but that is the this one looks like it's street. the same one where the car where pete initially died Got hit it's probably the location they have permits for probably okay well thanks okay. buzzkill <laughs> <laughs> that was emotional tie into that area i'm gonna climb oh, yeah, across that, this table too. and slap you <laughs> there's a table here <laughs> <laughs> no it just I think I don't like Rose's theme because every time they play it, she's like crying. It's beautiful melancholy. I, that's what I, 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 it's true. It's melancholy and it gives you that sense of wanting like, um, like sort of, it's not quite the same, but that moment of Luke looking at the two sons of Tatooine. It's yes, got that it is very moment. Much like that. It, it feels like that. Yeah. It's a Buffy Angel kind of thing. <laughs> There's yeah, some kind of melancholy to it. That bothered me too. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, pick out those people in time. They're like annoying. <laughs> and also, Buffy's crying, and Angel is looking longingly at her from across the room. <laughs> yes. We can never be together. And I also like that Rose's theme could sound like a music box. It could be like translated into a music box and you'd still recognize it. It's that like, simple. Like a tune. Yeah. I do love Clara's theme as well. Like written music. Yeah. That I, one I really like. I, I do like of... Clara's theme. I just don't like... Never mind. <laughs> well, that kind of passed we'll up Rose's there. on mine. When they got to Clara's, it's like, okay, this is my new <laughs> yeah. favorite. But... But anyway, the Emperor reestablishes <laughs> contact with the Doctor and Jack. Very good that we don't have video going right now. <laughs> the Doctor confirms that the Delta Wave cannot be focused like we... <laughs> Never mind. That we are not right now? And will destroy all humanity on Earth. The Emperor asks if the Doctor is really willing to destroy himself and the entire human race along with the Daleks. The Doctor says human colonies exist and they will continue to survive. All life everywhere is threatened if the Daleks are allowed to live. Before he dies, the Dalek... Sorry. Before he dies, the Doctor wants to know one thing. Why did the Emperor use Bad Wolf? And what does it mean? The Emperor said it wasn't part of his design. Is this the... Is it in here that Jack says about the Doctor? I never doubted him. I never will. Yes. Yes. Yeah. That's a that's a great a little great, moment. Yes. It's one of the funny things though. It's like Jack. Well, I guess I guess I'm answering my own argument in my head. Jack hasn't been around that long, mm-hmm. but you know he's kind of been around for half the season. So I guess it is. He you know he has earned that enough and earned it enough to say I've never doubted the Doctor and I never will. Well, yeah. so we also kind of get the feeling in the last few episodes that they've. Yeah, other a bunch more of stuff things that's been gone. happening outside yeah. of the screen time. It's probably why his hair was able to grow. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> so what I thought was Jackson. interesting is if the Doctor did the Delta Wave, it would leave the planet more intact because it just destroys all brain matter. Mm. So mm-hmm. the planet would be more intact than what the so, Daleks are doing. So they could recolonize Earth, sort of. <laughs> just give it a clean slate. I don't know if it's all... It's a brain matter, so I guess a lot of the animals and humans would go but a lot of no all the animals all the animals and humans but I think it's like it would still leave you know plants and still be leave a planet that could Mm -hmm. have life life. on it yeah absolutely gonna be another cool show (laughs) who knows Uh, back on 21st century earth Rose tells Mickey and Jackie that she can't go back to normal life being with the doctor has taught her a better way of living Mickey tries to convince her to give up when Rose notices bad wolf signs all around her. There's even one in the poster at the diner. It's right behind her. Oh, I, I, oh, I missed that, that one. I didn't notice yeah. that one. It's like uh, somebody wrote on it, hmm. the back of the poster. 
She realizes it's a message connecting the present with the future, meaning there is a way back to the doctor. She tells Mickey that the TARDIS is telepathically um, is telepathic and alive. If they can open the heart of the TARDIS, she can t- tell it to take her to the doctor. Mickey tries using a chain attached to his car to pull off the console's door, but it doesn't work. All right. Um, yes. Back to what, what, there's a lot of stuff going on in the conversations that Rose is having with Mickey and yes and Jackie too, like you know commentary, or whatever, even on 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 people about uh, one thing that Jackie says is that her dad was full of mad ideas. Oh, that whole thing about when she that when you know she when Rose tells Jackie that she met her father. And that freaks out Jackie. Um, but before that, Jackie was saying how he was full of mad ideas. And as soon as she said that, I was like, oh, just like the doctor. So it's mm-hmm. like Pete mm-hmm. and um, and the doctor are kind of so have the same type of personality. Yeah. Um, and then also when she was yelling at her uh, right before Jackie runs off to do what she's going to do next. Oh, we haven't gotten there yet. yet. Yeah, you know, well, I'm not himself. Okay, I'm, yeah. Okay, just saying. Right before Jaggy did, <laughs> you know, Rose's whole argument. You know, when Rose gets emotional, she wants to act and she wants to do something. Mm-hmm. And them going back and forth, and Jackie was just saying, "You should, you know, you should stay here. You should leave." And I was thinking that there's, there's just like it's showing that there's two types of people in this instance when emotions make you act or emotions make you run, mm. and that's the difference between Jackie and and, and Rose. Rose. And then the next scene, she does what she did. Yeah. <laughs> In the diner, yeah. I liked the conversation they were having where Jackie's saying, that's 200,000 years in the future. We still have time. And Rose is, no, it's happening now. Mm-hmm. Where the present and the future is running concurrently, which ties in to the whole bad wolf. It's, just it's happening now. now and it's happening then. It, so yeah. there already is that little connection and, yeah, coming from Jackie. And right in that moment, too, I had a thought, like, because Jackie was saying, she, he sent you back. And I thought in a moment, so did he send her back to come back? Like... Did he send her back to be safe, or did he actually, his plan was to send her back because she's going to figure it out and then save everybody? Uh, no, just keep her safe. Yeah. He it's doesn't know what the bad wolf is. Yeah. At that, that, this point, he doesn't I know. Yeah. But that's what I thought at that <laughs> moment. Because um, the doctor's always one step ahead of us. Mm-hmm. Or yes. 20. <laughs> so. Right. Uh, it's interesting, that conversation in the diner, because it's, for me, I mean, I think I've said this before, Rosa is not my favorite companion, and I know people love her, and the part of the problem I have with Rose is on display in that scene. It's a great scene, and she tries to convey a kind of, you know, that Ro- well, that Rose has changed. She's not the same person, and all that's good, and she tries to explain that other people won't understand, mm-hmm. and that's good, too. You know, it's almost, it's, it's almost like she's describing it like they... they would say about you know people who were in World War One, and they would come back, and no one could understand what they went through except for another person who was in the what same, they did. Yeah. You know, kind of that band of brother kind of mm-hmm. mentality, which is very real. She tries to explain that, but then she gets really angry and, runs and kicks or pushes the table, and she, and she just she reacts really kind of childish like, and that's what rose that pops up a lot in rose mm-hmm. and i know that rose is a young character but there is a part of me that's just like stop it <laughs> so it, it, that this scene is it's a really good scene i like it but then there's always that part of me that just kind of like cringes going oh don't be such a baby you know and and you can kind of understand mickey mm-hmm. his frustration his fr- yeah. he's so frustrated with her what am i supposed to do yeah. you know and but that what that means as well as that Rose is a complex character. Mm-hmm. She's very complicated. She's got a lot of layers to her. So that's a good thing. Unfortunately, part of those layers annoy me a lot. <laughs> Understood. Agree. <laughs> and I, like, I knew I'd have one person. And I like Rose. And yes, I think that does show a bit of that she is more immature. But she just needs a little more time to grow. And I think if the mm-hmm. doctor would have found her at a later yes. date, it would have oh, been yeah. a different yes. reaction. I agree. But right now she's at that point where she knows she can do something there's got to be something she's grown to that point but not to the next step of what is that something right you know uh, I, and don't get me wrong i think it's great writing i think i think what rose does in that scene is very true right okay you know it, it, it is very much what a person in this case rose would do 
to me is doesn't make her the best companion ever though you know it it just it's like okay you are really young at times and you do annoying things to me that that i think is what i'm saying well yeah another thing to kind of back that up i guess was when she's in the tardis and mickey's telling her if you go to the future if you find a way to make this work you're gonna die and she goes i don't care Mm. there's nothing left for me here Standing right there. Yeah. yeah. And oh, she yeah. just slaps him in the face with and that. And he's like, going, no. There's nothing for me. Nothing. Nothing. Well, then he does and what dismisses. he said he was going to do in the other episode where, and you, I'll always be, you'll come right, you'll come calling and, and I'll, come I, and I'll yeah. And he's going to help her. But I mean, that is that immaturity of Rose in that she dismisses him and dismisses her mother. Yeah. Mm. And, and, and wow, Mickey is the male that. Martha. <laughs> and maybe that's why Rose is so popular because they're they're gravitating toward the younger viewers. Yeah, who can relate to again what no, what she does thing. is realistic. What yeah. she what she you know I, yeah I, I'm a lot older than Rose. I would probably be doing. I probably would have thrown the table out the window. I'd be so frustrated. <laughs> I stopped breaking things when I, when I got angry in my thirties. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, but it is just kind of like okay. It does. There's a part of me that it's just kind of like, oh, I just want to just shake yeah. her. Which again, then makes me feel kind of icky because she is a 19 year old girl <laughs> with an old man. You know, like how old is the? She's doctor? at least 20 by now. But the, the doctor's Maybe like, 21. how old is he? 900. 900. Like, how many exactly. other 900? How many other 900 year olds are you gonna run across? <laughs> I run across still, two. It's, like, there's it's like, still <laughs> legal. It is <laughs> my high school students when they're dating someone in their late twenties. I think it's icky. So, because that's know. the real world, and it is icky. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this is yes, <laughs> the real world, and this. But then, when the doctor's a thousand, she'll be like a hundred nineteen. Yeah, that's true. It's much okay. better then. <laughs> <laughs> it's like not even something you can think about. But I think we're missing the big point here. What happened to Mickey's yellow VW Bug? He has a green Mini I Cooper. I know. Yeah. When did he get that? <laughs> That's probably what they had the permit for. <laughs> um, the VW probably said, you can't use that to fail. Yeah. Well, oh, yeah. Well, what year was it? 2000, was it 2005? When yeah. did those mini... When was that resurgence of Mini Cooper? Oh, uh, it could be. That was a classic was... Mini Cooper, though. Not the new one. Yeah, whatever. Oh, All right. My... Uh, yeah. Well, he's going <laughs> to start talking about guns again. They're like, we don't want German cars here. It's just... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Nine. <laughs> So uh, back in the future, Jack has left Linda with a Y <laughs> in the fortified outlook to relay tactical information about the Dalek positions within the station. She reports that the Daleks have entered the station, but instead of heading um, up like they thought, the Daleks... No, instead dis- of heading down, they head up. No. no. No, they wanted to go up to floor 500. They thought right the Daleks away. were going to go up. The Daleks don't go up. They go, they go down. down to the lower levels. It's okay. Smile and nod. <laughs> So the numbers go... Uh, yeah. The top floor, of the station floor is 500. Floor zero is the bottom of the station. Okay. And floor 500 is the top. Which Frank was just saying, gotcha. and I interrupted him. <laughs> the Daleks descend run. to the lower floors and start killing the unarmed humans, including Roderick. They proceed back up to the well, top before floor. Before you go, I just have to say, you know, oh, there, right. there needs to be a moment of, of silence for Roderick. No, there doesn't. Because is this man not the most annoying person of the season? He surpasses Adam. I would take an entire show based around Adam. We are all pondering that right now. (laughs) Oh, this guy is the worst. We all want my money. money. He only only had like a combination of like six or seven words just rearranged into different sentences. Yeah. yeah. He knew how to play the game, though. That's for sure. Oh, yeah. But God, oh, yeah. it just drives me crazy. I'm, you know what? The, he was probably written as a total representation of something. Society. So, yeah. You know, some member. You're like, I want my money, but I'm important. It, it was almost me, like. Me, me, me. Yeah. Like the whole episode's written too well for that character be, to be written so poorly. Mm-hmm. So it was probably an, a, a definite. Commentary. Commentary. Absolutely. So the Daleks proceed back up to the top floors where Jack and the others attempt to slow them down. The others are killed and Jack runs out of ammunition. With his back against the wall, the Daleks exterminate Jack. Another group of Daleks approach from space and blow the observation wall of Linda's room, killing her. Did you uh, notice how it blinked the lights when they were outside? Exterminate. Exterminate. I love how you can see that without words. (laughs) And also, I have a question. You know, like they set traps on the various levels, right? So It reminds me of uh, aliens. Yeah. 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 
so you know jack says oh they're at 494 five or something, something. Yeah. i like 495 yeah. and it's the android that's right right so Anne is you are the weakest link mm-hmm. and blows them up and then the daleks you know keep just, going yeah well they blow her, her up. yeah my question is aren't wouldn't there be like 50 androids on this station why? not just one why why because, because of all the different games there are there's 60, 40 bi- big brothers 60 big brothers 60 big how brothers how do you know that they linda told us in the last oh, episode okay. with a y <laughs> right. yeah so it's like there's a lot more androids out there well then also too, i mean like, you know they're not going to do it because this is the script yeah. and, you know but still it's like when i was just thinking about it going have an android yeah. like every 10 feet well that's just they just that, didn't have the budget no they didn't well, yeah. maybe there was and we just this didn't is the last it. one we saw. <laughs> this is the last Anne. it's kind of geek logic too because my thinking was like why are there you know she takes a couple of them out but there's like a million of them mm-hmm. it's like why are that why are there only like a half dozen daleks that we see going through the thing when they're all you know they have so many well also worst she, plot hole <laughs> ever yeah. well also she gets three rounds before she has to reload and say you are the weakest link yes. so there's that <laughs> moment where they can get her <laughs> I love that she doesn't have an actual disintegrator beam. She's just transmitting them back, back to space. <laughs> oh, I never thought just, of that. I just visualized these Daleks floating around in space. And then well, the same three now? come in and kill her. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. So Jack dies. Yeah, Jack dies. It's very disappointing. Duh, duh, duh. I'm upset. Sad? You're sad? I'm sad. It's almost like that, a lack of build-up. It's just, yeah, that's what I thought. He's going to kill me. Boom. He's dead. Well, it's just he, sort of ended what do you mean he's dead well i think it's great because he says um or they say exterminate he goes yeah i kind of figured that yeah i kind of like that no it's it's yeah and the effect like he's dead it looks like a they had a cable tied to him and they pulled it yanked him back it looked really good yeah (laughs) yeah when he got shot but linda is like linda's was great you know they're trying to break into the main door and then she realizes behind her i don't know how i don't know if she saw a shadow or what yeah around and there they're coming up it's like, do they actually kill her? Is it just the vacuum of space that kills her? That's <laughs> the vacuum how they space, chose I to think. kill her. It's like, oh. <laughs> I think they would have shot her had they had the opportunity. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, they but, just knew if they broke But, but also, she's reporting about what they're doing on Earth. So they need to get, get her out of the way. Well, no, no. Oh. I'm No, oh, my point yeah. is, like, she's we're finding out what's happening on Earth, and they're blowing an entire continent. You know, they blow right. up Europa. Yeah. Pacifica. Yeah. Okay. Australia. I think they said North America. Mm-hmm. So they're doing this. In four shots, they've done four continents. To me, it's like, doesn't that make the doctor's decision a little easier? Mm. Because, mm. oh, I'm going to kill everybody on the planet. Well, they're going to be they're dead in two minutes anyway. anyway. The planet's going to be gone. Well, yeah. yeah. And I mean, I know emotionally, you know. We want it. It's still, you know, if I had to make that choice, it still would be me doing the action of killing them rather than watching somebody else do it. But still, it's like, okay, well, the planet's gone anyway. <laughs> True. Okay. Jackie tries to convince Rose to give up. Rose tells her that she can't. Her father uh, wouldn't have given up, and she knows this because she met him. She tells her mother that they went back in time, and she was the woman Jackie saw all those years ago holding Pete's hand when he died. Jackie is overcome with emotion and runs away. Later, she returns with a large truck big enough to pull off the console door. Rose tell, uh, telling Rose that this is the sort of thing her father would do. The plan works, and Rose looks directly into the heart of the TARDIS. The doors of the TARDIS slam shut, leaving Jackie and Mickey outside as it disappears. Yay. I we mean, touched that a bit already. A yes, scene we did. between Rose and Jackie. Yeah, and I think it's um, really great how Jackie is almost... It's a switch where you think she's running away. She can't deal with this emotion, mm-hmm. but she comes back to yeah. like save the day at the night. I but I think she is running away because she can't deal at with the, the moment, emotion yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. In, the, in the moment. And yeah. then she calms down and realizes Rodrigo needs uh, <laughs> something. Or she, she needs a favor. Yeah, she's, she needs she something something owes a favor. Yeah. I love how that's just a throwaway line. And very Jackie. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's great. <laughs> the Delta Wave is ready just as the Daleks reach the doctor. The Emperor taunts the Doctor, telling him to do it. Destroy us all. He asks if the Doctor is a coward or a killer. The Doctor decides he can't kill an entire race again. The TARDIS appears and Rose steps out. She has merged with the time vortex of the TARDIS. What do you think about that coward moment? He picks coward? Yeah, every day. Seem no, I, I like it. Like it. Well, it does to me. Because, because of what he is now. We've because because this comes at the end of this season, 
and from what we've learned hap- that happened before the season and his progression through this season, I think that's he's reached that point now where he's like, I'm not going to do it again. I can't do it again. He doesn't say that. But he's changed because of Rose. But he I mean, does we've seen say it through, yeah. I mean, at the beginning, when we, way back at the beginning of the season, he would have killed him, no yeah. problem. Yeah. Even back with Cassandra and mm-hmm. all that, he, he would have. Yeah. And it's like at times, going all the way through it, she's restrained him, mm-hmm. reopened his view of life. I mean, the, I think the Dalek episode was very pivotal in because mm-hmm. he had the gun, was going to yeah. kill the Dalek. And she's saying, look at yourself, what you've become. That, I think, was the main pivotal moment. And so it's just, I, I buy it. I think, yeah, I'm not going to be that anymore. This is what I want. And he's ready to die. He's like, I've lived 900 years. I'm I not think- going to live on your terms. I'm not going to do something that's going to be against me again. I've done that with the time war. I've turned against what I thought was right just to try to do the right thing. And it's like, I can't do it again. No, I think never. That, I think that's the intent. But there's something about that moment that, that bugs me. I don't mm. know if it was the way it was shot, the way it was acted, the way it was written. Like, I think you're right. And I think that was what they planned. But something about that moment just didn't ring true for me. For me, I agree in part with that. Because I think the way he said cower all the time, I'll choose that all the time. Yeah. You wouldn't have earlier on in the season. Yeah. So that's where that disconnect kind of feels. Uh, it felt like but he was to me to it feels like he's somewhere. he's horribly ashamed of what he did. So he's like, I you know, I pick coward and I'm gonna do that every time. He's completely rejecting what he was before. He's he's saying, Nope. Every single time I'm confronted with this, I'm going to be a coward. But he's not really picking coward. It's like those are the two choices, right. coward or killer. No, 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 no. And no. he's going, not coward a is not, killer. not a killer. Yes, yes, completely Rather agree. Than, coward, is, right. coward is a oh, code so word. So in a way, right. it's like a code word. With the te- it's like, I'm, I'm not going to shoot a gun. I'm not going to. Yes. Mm. All right. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, it's not. All right. So I, I was it's focusing not, more he's not a coward. On the words. I was focusing more on he was saying, I'll be a coward, not I won't be no. a killer. No, he's mm-hmm. because that's what the emperor says to him. You have these two choices and he's like coward. All right, I got you. Yeah, and it is, and and inside the word coward is all He's that. Cow. <laughs> all right. And ward. 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 And ward. ward is it good ward. for? The ward. Ward. Absolutely ward. nothing. <laughs> Say it again. <laughs> Absolutely nothing. Um, but that's what. But I mean, you you get what I mean. Like, there's so much packed into right. that one word. Yeah. Uh, and, he, and again, he wouldn't have done that in right. well, now, in the episode is... Rose. He would not. He might have said it. Yeah. He wouldn't have meant it. No, when I put now the moment back it. now, thinking it, thinking of it that way, it yeah, makes, it's not the word. It feels better. Yeah. I approve. <laughs> <laughs> the doctor begs Rose to stop uh, doing what she's doing because she has the time vortex in her. This will kill her. She says uh, she has to keep her doctor Ooh, safe. Can I interject before you keep going? Because I got something before that happens. Sure. Uh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> um... So the emperor is he the emperor is that what he's emperor Dalek? Um, he calls her the abomination, yeah. not an abomination. And I was yeah. wondering if there was anything yeah. behind that. I don't. It I ha- always wonder on it that. It hasn't been revisited. Yeah, that's for sure. But, yeah, you know, but it is just one of those religious catch- catchphrases. Yeah, you know. Yeah, but to me, it's also something like it. It calls. It, it does call it's for something. Not a, it's not a grammatical accident. <laughs> you know, they don't do that on this show. Like, there's a. No, I agree. There is. Yeah something specific behind mm. that we've just never been told it right. and she, at this point we probably never will she's oh, the that, woman of revelation that brings down the church and that's why she is the <laughs> abomination <laughs> I'm saying, oh, I'm not a okay there you go. we're doing some or, di- deep cuts right now i think arlene just thinks rose is an abomination <laughs> <laughs> no but that's probably it that's probably it because yeah. this these whole two Very episodes good. are rife with religious uh, iconography yeah. or something women I know. We're horrible. <laughs> <laughs> Remember so, that. So I'm gonna back up I'm gonna back up a little bit. The TARDIS reappears and Rose steps out. She has emerged she has merged with the time vortex of the TARDIS. She is bad wolf and sends those words throughout time as a message to lead herself here. The doctor begs Rose to stop. This will kill her. Yeah, that that was a little important thing to mention. Okay, <laughs> she, say, <laughs> she says that she has to keep her doctor safe. She raises her arm that and destroys. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and she starts to destroy the entire Dalek um, race. Everything dies. The time war ends. She brings death, but also 
brings life. <gasps> At that moment, Jack comes back from the dead. Rose begins Yay. to die from the energy inside her, but can't let go. The doctor kisses her, drawing the vortex into himself. He releases his releases it back into the TARDIS and carries Rose inside. Now, I get that she sent the, the words back through time as a signal for them to follow. But in every instance of referencing Bad Wolf that we've seen, they've never made a point to see it and follow it. They're not following anything, though. It's just... There. It's it's an, an awareness. This is weird. It's ca- happening over and over and over oh, and over. Oh, so again. that moment in the parking There's lot. There's nothing to follow. That's why she noticed Yes. It. All right. Yeah. To All say right. It's, of- it's to create the link between <laughs> the past and the future. Uh, it's not, they, weren't actually... bread, they weren't breadcrumbs. No, they were not specific okay. breadcrumbs. Then I get it. And because... I wonder if a bad wolf was what the Daleks used for that corporation, and that's where she got the, the term, name. Yeah. And it's like at that yeah. point, that's where it began. Right. Uh, well, I take it as when she that. says, I took the words bad wolf and spread, I think she just yep. did it right. That When we saw her do it, that's when it happened. Oh, yes. absolutely. But there are other yes. theories that she created bad wolf the bad wolf corporation. As nah. part of that, to no. be that's yeah. the anchor part. I think but I think, the, yeah, either origin. way is cool. It's, but yeah, I like. The, I think they were just two random words that just, she saw, and boom, right. it became important. Right. It's because like, she's afraid of the big bad wolf. <laughs> well, 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 I, at the very end of the series, <laughs> we'll find out that bad wolf is a sled. <laughs> <laughs> Throw it in the fire. <laughs> but that's. I mean, that's a great. I mean, it's really emotional. The doctor is so worried about Rose mm-hmm. and she's saying, I like how she says, I can't stop. Yeah. yeah. Cause it's like, she could, I mean, not could, but she wants to, but can't, you know? And yeah. so it takes the doctor to draw it out of her. She doesn't have the ability to put it back in the TARDIS. Yeah, it's also, and I don't of, think she wants to, and it's, it's, also, it's like a drug. It's also one of those, um, she's not emotionally mature yet. Maybe and this could be part of that where, she has this power, but she doesn't know what to do with it. She doesn't know how to control it, really. Yeah. And well, she knows how to. I think it's. It. I right. think it's almost. I think it's I, more it, of a physical thing. She's this puny human right. that can't contain. Yes. That energy. Yeah. Energy. But uh, but she does also. I mean, she is kind of like enjoying it. Mm-hmm. I see all yeah. of life. I see all of it. You know. And he's like, "That's how I see every yeah. day." And I think that's also, why you... he finally kisses her because it's like they're equals now. Yeah. Well, she's like a time lord. It's like she sees everything like he does so it's not weird anymore and it's like, I, <laughs> We're the I, same. I just took it he kissed her to, to take the energy from her but, no, no. <laughs> I could have touched her and got the energy but he's like no what a different episode that would have been <laughs> <laughs> he's like give me your pinky <laughs> <laughs> pinky promise yes Yay. but Arlena okay. could also be that she couldn't you know uh, stop and she was gonna die because you know she's a girl. Oh, <laughs> what <laughs> do you want to take that? Back? No, I want to see Arlene's easy. reaction. <laughs> well, what about the line? I have to ask Rose. I think you need a doctor. Yeah, that's a great line. That's great. Uh, I liked it the first time I saw it, now it just seems so corny yeah i kind of agree it's it fine made, it made me it made me think of all those other times even these episodes where he's goofy he puts on a stupid smile he's making he's t- making a stupid joke like i do <laughs> i think it depends on my mood when i'm watching it whether True. I'm like, yeah, yeah, this last time I, it was like really cringe. i don't know i feel like it's one of those moments where like in a horror movie you have time to breathe and then you get like a one-liner or a pun it's sort of like that it's, yes it's giving and you the this first emotion time. And yes. then you have this time to kind of, oh, let's, yeah. it's not so bad. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so as they leave in the TARDIS, Jack arrives just in time to see the TARDIS disappear. Bummer timing, dude. Yeah. He's left alone so they on feel, the station. So they still think he's dead, right? Yes. Mm-hmm. Well, well, Rose sure. does. Yeah, well, Rose, Rose doesn't but... remember anything, though. Yeah, yeah what do you... Uh, that really but, that bugs me. Spoilers. <laughs> well, well, cause, well, he's going to say it right now. Go ahead. Well, because at that time, we don't... I mean, Jack is dead for all that we know. No, I mean, uh, it bugs me that she doesn't remember why. Well, I actually finish what you're doing. Okay, finish what you're doing. Finish, <laughs> we'll we'll finish continue. The, the, the Almost done, and then we can. Yeah. yeah. Okay. The doctor tells Rose that his cells are dying because of the vortex energy, but time lords can postpone death by regenerating every cell in their bodies. He will still be the doctor, but not the same. He tells her goodbye and transforms into the tenth incarnation of the doctor. Barcelona. 
<laughs> Lovely little Faulty Towers reference. Oh, that's weird. Oh, oh is that what it is? Yeah, it's Faulty Towers reference. He's from Barcelona. Manuel! Um, yeah, it bothers me that this has happened to the doctor, and now the, you know, the next episodes and stuff, and she really has no idea why he did it. Hmm. She has bits of memory. Bits of memory, but... And it could come back when everything settles down. I don't remember, remember more. it well enough to know if it does come up, and she does. So, I don't think they ever address it again. To me, Not it's from Rose's like, point to, of view. To do, he obviously did it on purpose, and she knows that. Like, so she Did what on purpose? Regenerated. Regenerated, or, or killed him, this version of himself for something and she has no idea what happened oh she no no rose knows she has the time she in in later episodes she, she knows reference she it? had the time vortex inside of her and used it mm. so when because what is she, when is her lapse in memory well i think she's just in shock oh okay so as time passes she's gonna go oh yeah that happened that happened that happened that happened they just don't make mention of that okay but later on she does she is kind of like oh yeah you're right I you're, do remember you're that, that good guess what i did mm -hmm. right and she that's right she does that yeah mm -hmm. is that a moffat episode though? Mm -hmm. no all right davies davis and then they just leave jack well, yeah but she know. doesn't yeah, but, but all we know is she's the doctor the doctor and the doctor and rose yeah. well all we know is Jack was dead. Yes. And they left. Why would they hang around? Yeah. But he was a great companion. Oh, he was awesome. Oh, yeah. And the doctor we'll would have him. found, went to look for Rose's body if that would have happened, though. I don't know. That's, that's a discussion for a different episode. <laughs> that's, a different, uh, that's a different podcast called The Adventures of Captain Jack. <laughs> he had other things on his mind. Okay. You know, dying. I don't know why dying. no one else became alive. Yes, I wonder that too. Always, oh, yeah, you're I right. I think it's yeah. that she didn't have time. The doctor stopped her from doing all of that. Wasn't he? Um, yeah, I, and also, that's how it I wasn't, like I don't, explain it away. She says, I, I bring life. I don't think she was like... Meaning to do that. Yeah. I think it, was it was him just being right around. Proximity. Yes, because he was the closest one to right. them. Everybody else was on like lower floors. So, And he was also the one who would, had been dead the least amount of time. Could be that she couldn't. Well, maybe because I mean, there's was, a lot of just all of this yeah. is speculation, right. but there's a lot we of different reasons. A lot yeah, of different yeah. Things. because he was probably it's the mostly story. dead. He's mostly dead. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe the next doctor will run into a whole, you know, uh, the, the space station uh, with a bunch of people on it that won't die. The people on the I'm sorry, I can't we get we this. Don't. I mean, yeah. Satellite Five. Yeah, Satellite I mean, Five. Everybody <laughs> on Satellite. I mean, yeah. Roderick is immortal. Yep, they're all there <laughs> they for the rest of eternity. Satellite Five, and they're all there. He's like, I, I want my, my money. money. <laughs> they, and they keep getting in fights and dying and then coming back to life. He just oh, walks God, around going, "Are, are you, you my Linda? money?" <laughs> <laughs> well, Linda's no. Linda's no. Linda would be out in space. Yeah, she's yeah. And then die again, and then float oh, around. She'd come back. And she has nothing to hold on to. She'd just be floating in space every time she'd come back to life. Oh wow, she would be horrible. Because yeah. Yeah, cause oh well. Do. Yeah. No, it's only Jack. <laughs> yeah, it's only Jack. It's only Jack. Thank goodness. Um, so the idea that the TARDIS console directly harnesses energies which drive the ship and the heart of the TARDIS is uh, from an episode called the destruction, the Edge of Destruction, and which is on the DVD set, The Beginnings, which has the pilot episode and the first episode of the Daleks. So, oh, is that early? Yes, yeah, that early. Oh, wow. So it's like. Russell is a fan calling oh, back to uh, an episode, of yeah, of where the TARDIS is alive and telepathic and and starts messing with everybody on the TARDIS because yeah. it's sick. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, so I, I think that, that that's one. cool. It's like if you're just watching it for the first time, you don't know about it, but then if you start getting into the the lore, the mythology, the continuity of Doctor Who, this will be like, oh, that's I'd, really. I'd rather cool. get into the data of. Doctor Who rather than the lore. All right, Noonan Singh. <laughs> oh, uh, I'll take that back. Thank you. <laughs> I have to do one Star Trek reference an episode. Um, You've already done like five. <laughs> <laughs> this is time okay. travel, so they're all happening at the same time. <laughs> I don't We're just catch any up. of them, so it's fine. <laughs> Welcome to Frank's world. <laughs> We're cutting you off. <laughs> Make it so. Oops, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I, I like the, the Emperor Dalek and it's not the first time we've seen an Emperor Dalek there's been other versions of him but I think this one is the best looking one because there's one with a big like sphere dome and that looks ridiculous to me and then the there's classic. yeah the classic series and there's some others but most of the stuff in yeah. the classic show looks but I like ridiculous. this version of the Dalek 
uh, emperor. So where does in in what he was saying, where did this emperor Dalek come from? He was in the Time War, and it's he just, fell through it's it. Just a Dalek in the Time no, War. No, he. I think he was the Dalek Emperor. Oh, in the, in, oh, in, the, in time. the Time War, and he fell through time and okay. crashed somewhere. But Eugene, you're saying he's in the classic series. The, the title, I guess, oh. of Emperor Dalek has been given to other Daleks, and they've. They they look different from your soldier Daleks. If you and will. this was the only Dalek to get through the time war. So none of those other ones. So he no no, no the no Dalek one. and Dalek, huh? The earlier Dalek episode. And Dalek. Yes. And uh, then this, there might be others. Well, there might be others, but like in this particular story, he's it was just the only him. one who fell through. And then he started to create this grand long game yes. plan yes. of doing yes, this. and eventually got humans to use genetic material to build Daleks. Gotcha. And then he put Simon Pegg into power. And then gotcha. He started well, who that, wouldn't? Yeah. Or the Jagrafex. Yeah, Jagrafex. Yeah. Um, Did I so, say it wrong? So back when we talked about Bad Wolf at the teaser for the parting of the ways, I thought that the voice that you heard at the end was Davros, but then now it's revealed that it's the Dalek Emperor. And I think that's a little bait and switch, if you will. Which if voice? Um... Yes, but people don't know who da- Davros is yet. I'm just saying, if, well, if, if, you're, watch classic the old who, show. if you're a classic who if you're classic. watcher. Um, at the end of the in the promo, the teaser says they have they survived through me, that voice. Okay. And so, I mean, I think people thought that that might have been Davros at the time. Right. But then now it's revealed that the Dalek Emperor. And he kind of reminds me of Krang from uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles by mm-hmm. having an exposed brain. Just much like Krang has an exposed brain in the belly. No clue. This is for all those. Uh, we, wow, we reached our geek wall. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't hit it that hard. <laughs> so I have a quick question. Yes. So a Dalek emperor can be anyone that's like voted into power kind of thing. But it's, it's a like parliamentary not... system. Okay. No, I don't know. So it's everyone. <laughs> it's like works. But it's, it's not like you're not born a Dalek emperor or because all of them are says. made right I, I don't think it's yeah it's it could all, be like a queen bee okay. unless you're like Prince Charles and he'll never be king <laughs> okay or or it's I, I some some part of me wants to think that they're promoted you know like you go through the ranks and then eventually you, you don't get, die yeah you get this promotion and then you're the emperor Dalek but then they don't, they don't no, they're no. all equal of not not yeah, having exactly. emotion kind of thing so it, it would be, have to be yeah, made I don't know to be an emperor maybe yeah maybe they're genetically created that way there, 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 we could speculate. There's we don't no, know. we don't know. But that's basically what it is. It's kind yeah. of like we don't know. We don't know. There are emperors. There have been emperors. And... Yes, absolutely. Okay. Uh, yeah. uh, there was a. Oh, that's interesting. The... <laughs> what? The... What's interesting? Well, yeah, I, I was going to say emperor. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm ignoring Eugene. One of the first Daleks who exterminated Davros and proclaimed the Daleks future victory over the universe assumed the role of Dalek Prime which later became Dalek Emperor and would continue to act as Emperor throughout Dalek history that's hmm. from a, one of the stories well, so. oh look there's the there's the ugly one <laughs> yeah that's not a good one um, anyway you guys can look this up online um, the thing that I was going to say is that they filmed two endings to this episode but then scrapped like I guess releasing it because of um, Eccleston's departure was leaked early so there was no need to film or to have two endings even though they got them or something do you know what the other ending was? Um, the false ending would have featured similar dialogue to the televised final scene but the TARDIS would have scanned Rose and the viewers would have seen the display read life form dying so they would have killed Rose. They would have killed Rose instead of killing the Doctor. So and they never sad. planned to do that. Yeah. No, they never planned to do that. Yeah. Because <laughs> they were, you know, because it would have tied into making Linda with a Y the new companion. Yeah, Rose 2.0. Yeah. But she got sucked into space. Yeah. Interesting. Well, and it also would have... Rodrigo? <laughs> <laughs> they could have brought in a new Doctor um, and just in the next episode switch that it wasn't rose dying Mm. it was the doctor like that would have been a way to leave it open if they were still negotiating with hickelson like if they didn't have it firm Mm -hmm. or yeah um i'm excited to see this young new chap who's going to be the doctor (laughs) uh Julie Gardner, one of the executive producers, cried at the viewing of this episode, their screening, and she wanted to immediately rewatch it, but was voted out, I think. (laughs) (laughs) 
um, the the line at the end when um, Eccleston is giving his farewell and he says, "Rose, you were fantastic, and so was I." Mm-hmm. That got cheers in the their their screening, and I think it's a great line. It's a great line. Uh, anything else? I don't know. I... First time I watched it, not excited about the new Doctor. <laughs> Especially when you go out on such a great monologue, and, yeah. like you were. Fantastic. It is a great monologue. And so was I. Yeah, and... but it's interesting to think that way because in the next episode and then the, the next couple, she doesn't like him either. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, that's the true. The whole thing too. is like you're not the doctor. And yeah. That's exactly mm-hmm. how we feel. It's like no, 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 mm-hmm. you're not. And then, Kelsey, you want to uh, tell us how you felt? <laughs> oh, more I felt detail? the same with Arlene. Tell I was the story. like, who is the this story, though? skinny? <laughs> oh, <laughs> okay. Uh, well, Eugene was the one who introduced me to Doctor Who, and after months of saying, you have to watch this, you have to watch this, I finally started watching this this series and fell in love with the Doctor, and then, of course, the Doctor gets ripped away from me at the very end, and I, next time I saw him, I came up to him without even saying hi, I was like, what's going on? <laughs> who is this new Doctor? I didn't, I was so new to, to the to Doctor Who, I didn't know that he regenerated and all this kind of stuff. And I think my response was, you're welcome. (laughs) (laughs) I think it was like, just wait, just wait, you'll like him. So if you're new to Doctor Who and you're out there and you're watching and you just watch this episode and you're upset that the Doctor is a is different now and he's skinny and weird looking (laughs) and weird hair. hair, weird hair, weird accent, just wait, just wait. You'll feel like that every time he regenerates. Yeah. <laughs> this is the nature of the show, Doctor Who. <laughs> There's always change. And I think it's uh, kept the series alive. Um, oh, that's... for sure. Yeah. To, uh, to geek out a little more, the concept art or the concept work done for the interior of the TARDIS was done by Brian Hitch. Oh, and, really? Yeah. And those of us, I guess Josh is one of those, that knows of his work. He did uh, Marvel's The Ultimates is probably one of his more claim to fame things. He, he, illustr- uh, he drew those uh, issues. So I think that's cool that he got to work on Doctor Who. And those of us at the table who don't even know what Marvel's The Ultimates is? <laughs> it's it's an okay. it's, it's a it's a it's a, a new incarnate it's a reboot of the Avengers. It's a comic book. We forgot to what, mention that. It's a comic book. It's a reboot of the Avengers that basically the movies the Avengers is more based on. Yes. Oh, oh okay. I have it kind of like modernized it and cooled it up. So if the Ultimates didn't, and it got very popular, and yes. it was Brian They were Hitch's, the ones who based Nick Fury on, on Samuel yes, Jackson. Jackson. Yeah, that, that was just the artist. And then Samuel Jackson played. Okay. Yeah, yeah. so I do we remember wouldn't that. have had these these Avengers movies if it wasn't for the Ultimates. Okay. So I think that's cool, too. That's very cool. And they made, the, you know, uh, uh, Captain America more military-oriented, yeah. less of a Superman-type character. All right. No, I just... I'm glad that we all... <laughs> like, uh-huh. <laughs> I'm glad we all stuck around for series one of yeah. Doctor Who. Brian's for those of us in America, that would be something. season one <laughs> <laughs> of the series Doctor Who. Yes. <laughs> um, so let's go around. Would we recommend? Oh, remember with the, two parters part, we're going to do. Ding. Uh, <laughs> uh, yes. But we're going to change it with two parters. We're going to say, does does this second half live up live up to the promise from the first half? Does this second half? live up to the promise of the first half being bad wolf brian yes <laughs> brian Did you want to elaborate or is that it for you? it's just so good i love the whole thing i think there's a lot going on in this episode there's a lot of character stuff with the doctor with rose you know jack is great um the effects are great you know you got tons of daleks and you got a new doctor frank I think uh, Bad Wolf set it up well, and at the end, the story you know was like, okay, we're coming to get you, great cliffhanger, and just picked up right away, so it just flowed right into this episode. Mm-hmm. I say yes, it does complete the story and does it well. Arlene, yes, ish. <laughs> <laughs> there is no ish. Okay, fine. I'm gonna say yes. There yes. can be ish. You know, the ish is Rose. <laughs> you, you would have liked a new rose at the end of this not a new doctor would you have, would you have liked linda i think i would have i was just a little different so the the yes ish the ish is your issue with rose <laughs> I, yeah i guess it is i i need to stop hating on her you know she's linda just, does remind me of young. some of the older companions, companions. absolutely something fit well 
it's more, not, more bubbly. Yeah, it's not her fault. It's just the writing was... On the wall. No. no. <laughs> <clears throat> Auburn. Yes. I don't have more to add to that. But yeah, I think it completed the promise of the first episode. Josh. Yes, absolutely. Kelsey. No. I don't know. It's not... <laughs> it's not my favorite. I don't know, ish. <laughs> I think there's better two-parters in... Oh, yeah. In the um, I agree. later series and i don't know i don't i don't like that we lose our doctor at the end of this of the second but you half. had a big emotional reaction so that's like yeah i don't know <laughs> <laughs> they turned him it off so hurts. quickly though right it was yeah. just kind of like he mm-hmm. died and... it was like ripping a band-aid off and yeah. you're not expecting it as a viewer and and if i was gonna recommend the first part to a new viewer I don't know. I pr- probably would have paused if I had to have them watch it as two parts, as two parts as one. So mm-hmm. I'm going to say, no, it didn't live up to the first one just because of, it's just completely valid. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I would say, yes, I would combine these two together and as a watching, cause it, it does a lot to tell you what Dr. Who is. Yes. And what it can be. Yes. I completely agree with that. But I, are we doing the other thing as well? What's the other thing? About the other thing we usually do? About would you suggest it? Oh, we no. Just said, oh, I thought that was, does it live up? That's the same thing. Yeah, but we won't suggest it because it's a second half. Why oh, would we suggest we the second that. half? All right. Then, okay. <laughs> yeah, cut that. <laughs> um, so, thank you again for keeping I'm up. I'm not with... afraid to look stupid. <laughs> Obviously not. <laughs> I've, I've had a, a long practice at it. Not, it's a skill. This is a podcast, so you'll sound stupid, not look stupid. <laughs> right. I think you just beat me at that one. <laughs> You've heard our views. Are you upset to lose Eccleston? Are you excited to have a new doctor? Or are you both? Let us know. Email us at whoknewpodcast at gmail.com. Uh, thanks again for... Um, keeping up with us through this whole series one of Doctor Who and Eccleston's tenure as the Doctor, the ninth Doctor. Um, please subscribe to us, review us. Um, email. Email. Listen. Give it a, listen. It's real gusto there. That's, that's, that's like, like a jack. That's like a jack. Talk. <laughs> if you don't, you're going to die. Just, uh, <laughs> or you can hear us. Right, write some good stuff about us. And, um, yeah, exactly. you know, tell, your, tell your friends if you, if you have any. If, if, <laughs> if you don't comment, we'll just wither away and die. Um, and we'll probably still do the podcast because we oh, enjoy yeah. it. <laughs> We're going to keep going and hopefully you will follow us and we will see you the next you time. You will. We are going to keep going <laughs> and you're going to follow us. And those of us who follow us <clears throat> will be our brothers. We'll be our brothers in arms. <laughs> so we will see you next time when the future it becomes, becomes the present. present. <laughs> <laughs> You've just listened to an episode of Who Knew? Our wonderful theme music is by Michael Grady. You can find his work at theuniverseexplodes.com. You can find this show in several places. Follow us on Twitter at Who Knew Podcast. Subscribe, review, and listen to us on iTunes or our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Who Knew Podcast. All our episodes are on Who Knew Podcast.com. You can leave comments there or email us at Who Knew Podcast at gmail.com. This podcast is inspired by Doctor Who, the longest running sci fi show in history, and especially the revival spearheaded by Russell T. Davis. Thanks to Russell, Sidney Newman, Verity Lambert, Ron Grainer, and all those involved in the adventures of our favorite Time Lord. Your work, Your work continues, continues to inspire and entertain. entertain.